Welcome to the Revenge Story Times channel. Austin, the boss of Tane, loves to be the center of attention. We were at his house for a Sunday party. Under the influence of alcohol, he showed his true colors. He is as homophobic, sexist, and racist as one could possibly be, and believes that only his religious beliefs matter. I never liked Austin, and he didn't like me either. His house was decorated for the holidays, overdone both inside and out. I can't imagine his neighbors being thrilled about the crowds of gawkers driving by from sunset to midnight. There were Christmas trees in every room and mistletoe hanging in every hallway. Under several of them, I had already kissed T after watching the football game. I was dreading the presentation of the quarterly awards. Tay thought she was going to get one, so I crossed my fingers, hoping the evening would pass quickly and we could get back home and celebrate it in the nude. To accommodate the crowd of guests, several card tables were set up. At the table in the dining room, Austin had gathered the company's elite, while everyone else sat on folding chairs. Dinner was served buffet-style. After dinner, the dessert and drinks disappeared quickly. Austin behaved like his usual nitpicky self. I was stunned when he pointed in my direction and said, there's Ricky, who had to marry outside the family. Everyone in the living room gasped, even my wife, Tane. What kind of nonsense was this? I was boiling inside. Yeah, by the time he finished high school, you were already 23, Ricky. By then, all his cousins were either married or pregnant. This made everyone howl with laughter and deeply hurt our marriage, including Tane. I remained composed, not even bothering to give him the courtesy of a reply, positive or negative. When he attends family gatherings, everyone thinks he's still searching, and Tane must be his parole officer. Laughter shook the house. Tane didn't look at me once, but her laughter rang out as she hung on to every word Austin said. When the room quieted down, I spoke. Austin, I remember you saying something about growing up on a farm. We all know what that means, you lost your virginity in a field with the sheep, your jeans down around your ankles. Tane gasped, Ricky, yeah, those videos of people counting sheep must make you want to stand up and run after them. Ricky, please stop, Tane tried a different approach. It was dead silent. And your lovely fiancé, I bet her curly hair reminds you of your favorite farm animals. Does she make you finish faster by saying bah, bah? Ricky, stop it, came a frightened plea from Tane. Get the hell out of my house, idiot. Austin stood up, pointing at the door. I finished off my nearly empty beer bottle, waved him off, and left alone, walking out through the front door. I didn't look back even once. My phone was already turned off before I reached the car. It took less than an hour to pack the few things I wanted to keep. I left my wedding ring and the torn-up marriage certificate on the kitchen table, though I didn't want to keep them. I still took all the photo albums I could find. They ended up in a trash bin behind the motel where I spent my first night. I had been to parties at Austin's house before, but his alcohol-fueled humiliation of me on Sunday evening was the last straw. Though I didn't have any proof, I believe Tane was having an affair with that man. Her refusal to stand up against him was enough to destroy our marriage. If her job meant more to her than respect for me, she could have him and her career. Life is too short to waste on people like that. With the advent of internet banking, it became easy to open new accounts, but only in my own name. Time was not on my side. I needed to secure my share of the assets before Tane realized that it was all over between us. To hell with it, I took everything. Let her figure out how to get it all back. This is war. What does it matter if they force me to return them? Waking up on Monday morning, I was perplexed but quickly understood where I was and why I was there. I checked out of the motel and arrived at work at my usual time. My phone was still asleep at the end of the workday. One of my friends at work quickly checked the parking lot for me. There, it seemed a woman was waiting. She was parked on the street, apparently interested in the cars in our parking lot. Since my expense reports had to be ready by Friday, I stayed to work on them until 9 in the evening. Now there was little I could do if Tane was still there, and she was. As I approached my car, 
Tain interrupted me before I could reach it. What brought you here at such an early hour? Tain, cut the crap, Ricky. My credit card was declined, and my checking account is empty. And you ruined our marriage certificate. Here, put your wedding ring back on. The savings account, don't forget, I emptied that too. Keep the ring. Can't you take a joke? You're just a poor, thin-skinned child. Go to hell, or better yet, go back to damn Austin. I'm done with you. Over what? Because I laughed at my boss's jokes? If you want to believe that, sure, that's how it is. I don't understand what's going on here, and that perfectly describes why I left you. And now, unless you want to get sprayed with mosquito repellent, get the hell out of my way. You can't do this. She couldn't, but I could. Tane stepped back to her car. What the hell is wrong with you, she yelled at me as I stopped beside her. What's wrong with me? I had a wife who decided to laugh at me, not with me. If I had a wife who loved me, she would have stood up and said, go to hell, Austin, I'm leaving. How dare you insult my husband like that? Come on, Ricky, let's get out of this stinky dump. Unlike her usual sharp wit, Tane silently watched me. I left after booking a hotel room for the week. I tried the cafe I passed by every day but never stopped at. It turned out to be more than good. On Tuesday, Tane's approach changed. A note was slipped under my windshield. Ricky, forgive me. I should have stood up for you against my boss. Please come home. I love you. The absence of a turned-on phone was not as stressful as I thought. Checking SMS and email every few minutes was replaced by listening to the demons in my head. Without a turned-on phone, it was easy to avoid contacting Tane. Of course, I could have gone home, but that didn't happen. When I left work on Wednesday, Mr. Mysterious was waiting for me. Ricky, I'd like to apologize. I just behaved stupidly. I sprayed him with mosquito repellent as he returned to his car. Mental note, buy more mosquito spray. You are a pathetic loser. By the way, I'm sleeping with your wife. You are a cuckold. The suspicions were confirmed. It's a pity I didn't record it on a tape recorder. His wife would have been pleased to hear this confession. On Thursday, T returned. She was dressed better than what is suitable for an ordinary workday. Ricky, please come home. In that outfit, you look like today's company adulteress. Ricky, I dressed up for you. I doubt that. Does Austin now share you with others? Did you know he bragged about sleeping with you? If he did, he lied. I was faithful to you. I doubt that too. I don't know you anymore. I don't like you anymore. If you add it all up, I don't love you anymore. It was a five-year mistake. Don't say that, Ricky. I was faithful to you, and I still love you. Can I show you a video? Probably. Tane approached me, playing with her phone. She stopped a meter away from me and lifted the phone. The video was not taken by Tane but by someone else, and it focused on Tane. Thank you all for taking a moment from your workday. On Sunday evening, I did something stupid, something that might cost me my marriage. Many of you were there, so today I want to say, go to hell, Austin, I'm leaving. How dare you insult my husband. In the video, Tane approached Austin. She brushed him off, spat in his face, then turned and walked away. Notice that I changed clothes. I went home after lunch and changed into this. I want you to come home. He said he slept with you. That's nonsense. Maybe he wished it, but I believe in my vows, and you'll have to decide who to believe. Well, my colleague accidentally captured this right after I sprayed Austin. He turned on his camera. Do you want to watch this video? The video showed me walking away from Austin, who by then was leaning against his car, wiping his eyes. It clearly shows Austin telling me that I am a cuckold. Ricky, that's not true. Burn that bastard. Send this to his wife. 
I have her email address. What can I do to prove it to you? Ask anyone for proof. There won't be any. I'm willing to take a lie detector test. When was this supposedly supposed to have happened? Help me, Ricky. I don't want to lose you over a false accusation. I know I owe you a lot for my behavior on Sunday evening, but there was never any infidelity on my part. As much as I don't want to think about it, I'm curious why he chose to humiliate me. Is this what you do when you're alone? Mock me? Tane fought back tears. I wasn't with him. I don't know why he was bothering you. Tane was choking on her sobs. Part of me wanted to embrace her. I loved her enough to marry her. What if that bastard just wanted revenge for a time I embarrassed him? These emotions clashed with thoughts of, what did you expect to hear from her? I still need some time, Tane. I've paid for a week at my hotel. Give me some space. Tears streamed down Tane's cheek. Please come home, Ricky. I love you. Can you still say that you love me? I love you, T. I just don't like you right now. Tane looked as if she was about to break down. I opened my arms, and she crashed into me. Would you like to go out for dinner? I'd love to, Ricky. There's a cafe on the corner of 3rd and Highway. Let's meet there. Dinner was somewhat awkward. Tane tried to act as if nothing had happened. I, on the other hand, was bombarded with a million what-if questions. When it was time to leave, I kissed Tane on the forehead, which made her eyes mist over. Ricky, please don't seek comfort from anyone else. You don't need revenge because I have always been faithful to you. I love you. I love you too, Tane. Be careful on your way. Having returned to my room, I forwarded the video where Austin claims that I am a cuckold to Tane, asking her to send it to Austin's wife. Unsurprisingly, Mr. Jerk was waiting for me after work on Friday. Austin didn't know that security had been alerted and was parked near my car. As I drove into the parking lot, Austin approached me, saying, you bastard, I have to kill you. Fortunately, Austin only shot pepper spray at me. As I was wiping my eyes, he kicked me in the groin. Thankfully, the kick wasn't strong, but I still fell. He managed another solid hit before two security guards apprehended him. The police were called. He was charged not only with assault but also with threatening to kill me. The guards recorded everything on video. Tane left several messages begging me to forgive her, but I still needed time. That damn pepper spray was really irritating, and I ended up throwing my clothes in the dumpster at the back of the hotel. I was glad it was Friday evening, as the only clothes I had were not suitable for work, were dirty, and I didn't want to go home and deal with Tane. On Monday morning, I checked out of the hotel, fully intending to return to my home. However, after work, a couple of guys were waiting for me. Mr. Williams, could you spare us a minute? I couldn't catch which of them spoke, but I turned to them. Who are you, and why should I talk to you? The shorter and, I assume, older one answered, My name is Eric Brody. I am temporarily replacing Austin. This is James Sanger. He is from our corporate legal department. Last week, your wife resigned, and we would very much like her to reconsider her decision. Our attempts to contact her have been unsuccessful. We were hoping you could shed some light on what led to this. Sitting on the hood of my car, I briefly recounted the past week. I might have glossed over the fact that I sprayed Austin, framing it as a reaction in self-defense. That's what I told the police last Friday. He had no proof, and the video my friend took was after Austin was already on the ground, swearing. Sanger tried to speak as if in court, listen, Mr. Williams, your wife is not entirely blameless in all this, but regardless of her behavior at work, we really want her to come back to the team. She was the leader of a team on a profitable project whose deadline is rapidly approaching. Could you try to persuade her to return? What do you mean by her behavior at work? I asked. Both men looked at each other as if one of them had farted. Sanger tried to save face. 
Well, it's well known in the office that she and Austin were overly friendly with each other. We have no evidence that they ever violated the company's policy, which only applies to their joint time spent during working hours. Our investigation ceased as soon as they left the workplace. If he was trying to help, he certainly didn't succeed. Listen, James, if you're not willing to share the results of your investigation with me, I have no further comments. Brody looked concerned. As much as we would like to, Ricky, this information is considered proprietary, and employee confidentiality laws do not allow us to share it. Then I think you'd better call Tane and ask her to try a bit harder. Good day, gentlemen. As I was leaving, I was more puzzled than ever. My initial suspicion that something was going on between Austin and Tane intensified. Instead of going home, I drove to a sports bar and called Tane from the parking lot. Ricky, when are you coming home? Well, that depends on you. I just spoke with your company's legal representative a few minutes ago. He hinted that your office friends threw you under the bus for acting unprofessionally with Austin. Care to comment? Ricky, I've always been faithful to you. Then let me ask differently, would you have done all that you did with him if your mother was standing next to you? The pause spoke for her. Tane repeated, I have always been faithful to you. Just not honest. I gave you a chance to confess, and you didn't, and I pressed the red hang-up button. T immediately called back. I answered, not now, and quickly turned off my phone and drove back to the hotel. On the way, I stopped to buy new clothes and wondered if this would become my new existence. One of my purchases was a landline phone to avoid any ambush. After work, I arrived at 4 in the morning and left at 1 in the afternoon. My boss was okay with it and even suggested I work remotely a few days a week. Those who needed to contact me now had my phone number. I spent the nights feeling sorry for myself, clearing out mailboxes, emails, and voicemails. Yes, it seemed Tane was hurt, but she clearly hadn't been completely honest with me. The time spent away from Tane was painful. She seemed sincere in claiming she did not cheat, but something was brewing. Sooner or later, I would have to talk to her. Around one in the afternoon, as I was leaving work, I was called to the reception. Are you Ricky Williams? asked a woman dressed casually. Yes, how can I help you? I'm here to deliver this envelope to you. Have a good day. Taking it to my car, I wondered if Tane had filed for divorce. I was wrong. Inside was the result of a lie detector test and a signed post-nuptial agreement. I went through the lie detector results line by line. I went online to check if the company was legitimate. It turned out to be so. The questions were clear, have you had any kind of sexual relationship with anyone other than your husband since you started living exclusively together? No, true. Have you had an emotional affair during the same period? Yes, true. Only with one person? Yes, true. Did you arrange meetings that your husband would not approve of? Yes, true. Did you receive gifts that you should have refused? Yes, true. Is this still ongoing? No, true. Do you love your husband? Yes, true. There were many other basic questions, but my suspicions were confirmed. What now? I turned my phone back on and invited Tane to dinner at a cafe. Her response was a quick yes. Since dressing up for me didn't work out last time, Tane came in jeans and a hoodie. Sorry, I'm late. The traffic was just horrendous today. No problem. I didn't think you were ignoring me. That's right. So, did you get my package? I did. It's sort of a good news, bad news situation, and for that, I am sorry. I was foolish, and although you're not obligated to believe a single word I say, it should never have ended up with me sleeping with him. It doesn't matter, I said. Being married means having the strength of character to tell someone plainly that you are married and to maintain professionalism. She said with misty eyes, I know I let you down. I let myself down. Please tell me we still have a chance. Are you still working with Austin? 
No, he was transferred. Corporate brass lured me back with a raise. So you have your eye on someone else now? I think I've earned it. I promise to be an ice queen with men from now on if you just come back home. If I find out anything you haven't told me about your indiscretion, I will divorce you. Read the prenup, it's all in there. If you find anything, it's over for me. I know you won't because there's nothing to find. So will you come home? I reached out and grasped Tane's hand. She began to pull away before I whispered, yes. We celebrated the 12 days of Christmas with more energy than ever before. Her mischievous Santa's helper outfit instantly energized me. Santa Claus has never ridden so stylishly. Tane glued our marriage certificate back together, and it now stands in a frame on her dresser as a reminder of how close everything came to falling apart. Her mother helped her restore most of the photos I had thrown away. The company gave Tane a bonus to settle any issues that might have arisen from Austin's behavior. We might have been in his house, but the issuance of quarterly bonuses blurred the legal line. They decided it was better to close this matter than to risk a lawsuit. She is still the team leader. Every time Tane finds a sheep photo, we print it out and send it anonymously to Austin at his new workplace. We've heard from others that Austin has a few sheep figurines left on his desk. Thank you for listening until the end. See you in the next episode of Revenge Story Times. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. Goodbye.